Hi everyone. Today I'm going to take you through the case study of Disney. At the end of 2017, Disney announced it would acquire majority of 21st Century Fox asset, including its movie studio, TV production company, cable channels, and regional sports networks. If this gets approved, the deal would give Disney the scale and content to develop its own streaming service by 2019 when its contract with Netflix get expired. The rise of streaming had contributed to the steady decline of cable TV, DVD sales and cinema attendance in the US. This case discusses the transformation of the media landscape with the growth of digital. Now before moving to this case study, I would request each and every one who are watching this video to subscribe to 5 Minutes Learning Channel in YouTube in order to get recent video updates. Also, this video is enabled with English subtitles for your better understanding. Now let's move to the case study. The Walt Disney Company, which was founded in 1923 by Walt and Roy Disney, it had grown to become the world's largest media company and licensor of branded merchandise. Its portfolio includes films, television, theme parks and publishing. It operated on four business segments, media networks, parks and resorts, consumer products and interaction, and studio entertainment. Disney's corporate strategy from the outset had been content is king. Its unique offering were available through various distribution outlets and synergies across its multiple activities. Customers included television channels, cinema theaters and streaming services, notably Netflix, with whom it had an exclusive deal since 2012 to stream its more recent films. Competition traditionally came from other major film studios like Time Warner, 21st Century Fox, NBC Universal, Sony and Viacom. More recently, streaming services such as Netflix and Amazon Video along with YouTube had started to compete for Disney's customers' attention as well as for content creators' talent. The Walt Disney Company had a history of acquiring studio entertainment companies to enrich its content offering, including Pixar, which was acquired in 2005 for $7.4 billion, Marvel acquired for $4 billion in the year 2009, and Lucasfilm was acquired in 2012 for 4.1 billion US dollars. In December 2017, it announced its largest deal to date with the acquisition of a majority of 21st Century Fox. At first glance, it appeared to be a horizontal expansion. Fox International assets could help Disney's market its brand directly to consumers outside the American market where the US brand was limited to films and theme parks. Some analysts considered Star India, a fast-growing TV provider in India, invaluable for Disney. However, others saw it as a response to the disruption of the old business model, as film house ticket sale declined and Fox cable network lost subscribers as consumers turned to streaming rather than paid TV. Although streaming services were perceived as pure distributors, recently they had integrated backward into content production. By 2017, they were comparable in size to, if not larger than Disney in content production. Netflix spent almost $6.3 billion in 2017 on non-sports content but was expected to increase it to $8 billion in 2018 whereas the Amazon spent 4.5 billion US dollars and Disney spent 7.8 billion dollars on non-sports content. In 2012, the decision to engage with Netflix to stream Disney's most popular title was born out of Iger's conviction that while Disney's content remained distinctive, the distributors would do their utmost to ensure customers paid for it. With the arrival of Netflix, Iger saw 
a new way to distribute content and generate revenue. By 2018, Netflix was a sizable customer. According to one of the estimate, Netflix paid Disney $325 million US dollars annually to license its films. However, Netflix was more than another distribution channel for Disney. It was a competitor to Disney's other content customer, which is a cable TV. Since the arrival of Netflix and other players such as Amazon, Hulu and YouTube, so many of customers have switched from cable to streaming in a process known as cutting the cord. The streaming service initially offered a wide selection of available content with no restrictions on time to watch and unlimited viewing. Leveraging its user base, Netflix then acquired streaming rights, which further boosted its user base and strengthened its brand and buying power. Going one more step further, Netflix began to produce its own material, giving creators full control and guarantee that they would create an entire season at a time. This signaled another change, which is that the Netflix was now a competitor for differentiated content like Disney. Disney's idea of developing its own streaming platform was not new. According to Kevin Meyer, Chief Strategy Officer, Disney had started discussing streaming options in 2006. However, it had to tread cautiously since this implied embracing a new business model at the expense of the existing profitable model through the cable TV and other distribution outlets. In 2010, Disney introduced TV everywhere that allowed viewers to watch television shows on mobile phones. If they subscribed to cable or satellite services, but it was not a huge success. In 2015, its Disney Live app offered all Disney movies, series, children's ebooks, games, and music in the UK for a monthly subscription of 13 US dollars. But soon they realized that without a new film or exclusive content, it would never generate much interest. The app was not launched outside the UK. After repeated failures to develop its own streaming services, Iger came across the Manhattan-based technology firm BAMTech. The 850 employee company had an excellent record for developing and delivering millions of live streams simultaneously without glitches. Among its many achievements, BAMTech was responsible for building HBO Now, which had delivered just in time for the season 5 premiere of the popular Game of Thorns. Impressed by the small company and with a view to it developing its own streaming service, Disney paid 1 billion US dollars in 2006 for a 33% stake in BAMTech, with an option to buy a controlling in interest in 2020. Michael Paul, who had overseen Amazon Prime Video and introduced Amazon channels, was recruited as BAMTech CEO by Disney. In June 2017, BAMTech agreed to accelerate Disney's controlling stake option, resulting in a 75% stake in the streaming company for an additional 1.58 billion US dollars. This raised concerns among investors about the cost of developing a streaming service, as well as the loss of revenue from Netflix as of 2019 when the contract with Disney expired. Uneasiness mounted when Disney announced it would produce original films and series for the non-sport services. If approved by the regulatory authorities, Disney's deal with 21st Century Fox would signal a radical change in the media landscape. Together, they represented 40% of US box office revenue for 2016. The joint company would have significant bargaining power to negotiate affiliate deals with distribution partners. Yet this horizontal dominance was not the main concern of the antitrust authorities. They were more concerned about Disney's intended vertical move into distribution for similar reasons to those that blocked AT&T's acquisition of Time Warner. Whatever the regulators decided, the pressure to create new media combinations would continue 
as the incumbents faced a new wave of competition from Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. The old god began to realize that content was perhaps no longer king and was eager to scale up and acquire the ability to distribute content directly to consumers. With the Fox deal, Disney would have a wealth of differentiated content to include in its streaming library, including several of Netflix's most streamed programs, albeit some content conflicted with Disney's family-friendly image. Alternatively, it could choose to grow content more gradually and organically. Instead of vertical move into distribution, Disney could remain true it to its roots focusing on content development and extending its presence in fast-growing economies. The Disney brand was still very American and had room to grow by acquiring or developing content that would appeal to a global audience, perhaps with a focus on the world's largest economies in the next decades. Another concern was Disney's copyright on Mickey Mouse, which was set to expire in 2023 although extended several times, usually coinciding with the imminent loss of the Mickey Mouse copyright, it was uncertain whether Disney would be able to do so again. Thank you everyone for watching this video. See you soon with another interesting case study. For more such case studies, please visit 5 Minutes Learning Channel in YouTube.